Hello everybody, my name is Fyodor and welcome to my reaction to Demon Slayer Mugen Train Series Season 2 Episode 7. Last time on we had the repeat of the death blow to Enmu, the train crash, we saw Rengoku show Tanjiro how to stop his bleeding by breathing very hard, which is, you know, handy in the future, surely. And then the upper three of the 12 Kizuki appeared, or, you know, 6 Kizuki at this point since Kibutsushi killed five of them off and Enbu was the last of them. So yeah, very excited what this episode entails. I already saw the movie a few months ago, so it's not totally blind, but as I realized the last episode, that doesn't stop me from enjoying these episodes any more than I would if I was watching this blind. But anyway, I'm excited to watch this again, see the finale of my favorite anime movie, I believe, as an episode again. Once again, if you want to support me, you can like, comment, subscribe and share this video. These are then generally the best things that you can do for me for free. And otherwise, there's my Patreon, where you can get things like early access to non-live reactions one week into the future and full-length reactions. Speaking of full-length reactions, I was thinking about doing this from the beginning, but in the future, every first episode of every show that I'm watching, the full-length reaction is going to be available for that. And this time, this episode is going to be available as full-length to everybody as well. So let's start and get into the reaction. You can either watch the cut reaction as always, or follow the link in the description to the full-length reaction as well. Your choice this time. So, see you! Alright, <laughs> what a finale to the Mugen Train arc, I'd say. It happened again, even though I wished it didn't. But still, Rengoku is gone. Arcus of Lead. Let's just take it from the beginning, right? We had a repeated showing of Rengoku's fifth formed flame tiger. After which, you know, he, he was stunned a little, <laughs> I guess, and had to regain his senses to do the esoteric art, Rengoku, ninth form of flame breathing, if I got it right. I think this is flame breathing, not fire breathing. The ninth form that bears his family name, I guess. But it wasn't enough. He didn't cut the neck the right way and instead he got pierced by Akazo's fist which was the death blow at that point he was dead unless of course he would have become a demon like Akazo tried to plead again and again and you know somewhere I was like yes please survive by any means necessary but of course it wouldn't be that devastating <laughs> if it just survived like that. Yeah. Then a flashback of Kyojiro's mother. The, you know, imprint in him when she told him that strong people, people that were born strong, have to help the people who, who were born weak or are weak. Which yeah is a is a really good way of thinking and morally speaking it should work like that in the world but you know not every privileged person tries n not even the best the, the best but just tries at all to to help people who don't have as much as them and then the big big struggle begins Kyojiro actually plunges his blade into Akasa's neck again, slowly but surely pushing through. And at this point, I have to say that, you know, Akasa, I'm really glad that it was him that showed up because, you know, it felt like there were stakes, or at least 
an opponent that was interested in the fight you know he was hyped up he was happy he was angry he panicked when the sun came up all of those emotions he showed and i don't know if it was like someone with a mindset like anmu you know uh the really condescending kind of fighting or disinterested almost i don't think it would have felt as you know it, it would have felt worse in a bad way so to say like Kyojiro died because Akaza gave uh, a shit about the fight so to say and we don't know if it was the full potential of Akaza's power or if he got stronger or sh shows more of his technique in the future but he was seriously scared of the sun and you know of dying which I guess if you live for centuries this unplanned spontaneous death is is something that you dread absolutely and yeah so I'm really happy that it was Akasa and not anyone of the other uh, Kizuki because I guess some of them will be more like Kibutsuji, you know, cold, emotionless, calculating, and this wouldn't have really fit this fight. Yeah. But then, halfway through his neck, and Tanjiro and Inosuke actually going in to help out, and almost getting there, Akaza rips off his arms, gets away blades still stuck in his neck and all of that and of course Tanjiro follows I mean he can't really keep up with the speed so he just throws his uh, sword in a you know Hinokami Kagura style I guess not even expecting to do anything just to I guess inflict pain or you know get out some of the rage he's feeling but yeah he pierces his chest, nothing happens. I guess Ankasa takes his sword, but you know. I'm really interested whether Kyojiro's sword that's broken is gonna be refitted to be Tanjiro's sword. It would be. Uh, it, that would be really nice, I think. I don't think Kyojiro would have a problem with that. Yeah, then the actual tearjerker part started. And I didn't actually cry this time, but I was close again. As I said, I can only repeat that even on a second viewing, this arc was amazing and I enjoyed very every minute of, you know, content that I saw already to see it again but yeah Kyojiro asked Tanjiro to listen and listen closely to his last words because he has some information for him for example you know uh, that his dad seems to have some scro scrolls or scriptures I guess talking or he doesn't know what they are talking about but maybe his father knows more about the Hinokami Kagura briefing or fire briefing. So the next mission seems to be to get to the Rengoku residency. Yeah, also one of the dying wishes of Kyojiro was to tell his younger brother, Senjiro, to you know follow his dreams and make some something of himself, I guess. of course was what was very sweet was the acceptance of Nezuko which I was a really big fan of sadly he was the second current Hashira that accepted Nezuko after Giyu but he's already dead it seems so you know back to square one and yeah after that Tanjiro laments his weakness and the walls that are before him, I guess. 
And yeah, he just got strong enough to take out uh, one of the 12 Kizuki, you know, the, the lower moons, with help from Inosuke, because he couldn't do it alone. And then, you know, bam, this fucking new wall of, of the upper moon Hashira. Uh, upper moon Kizuki, fuck. Um, and, yeah. I guess it's gonna be so demotivating. Like, putting you all into doing this one thing and then the next wall is just so much higher. And I guess they took away the safety blanket now from, you know, if there's a Hashira, everybody gonna, is gonna be okay because they're OP. But now, you know, if one of the upper moon shows up, no one's gonna be okay. <laughs> like, danger, be terrified and all of that. And of course, the Kazugai crows that brought news of Kyojiro's death to all the other Hashira and the big boss. Big boss seemingly, seemingly not very sad, just impressed by Kyojiro's effort to, you know, lot, not let any person on the train die, except for him, of course. He said himself uh, would die soon and rejoin Kyojiro and all the other fallen demon slayers in the afterlife, apparently. So. I really hope that we get more information to the big boss uh, so that that will also be a good send off and not just, yeah, you know, we got the news, big boss is dead, got assassinated or succumbed to sickness and we don't really know what he did. We only know that he's in some kind of relation to Kibutsuji. We don't know their exact kind of relationship and we don't even know how old uh, the master is if it's like generations and generations of masters or if he's like overseeing this you know core of demon slayers for a very very long time so yeah I'm really interested to see whether or not we are gonna get to the Rengoku residence in time in the next few episodes or if something gets in between and if I know anything from the season 2 trailer, which I actually haven't seen, but I think the, you know, very ostentatious or, no, no, uh, flamboyant was the word, the flamboyant Hashira, I think is one of the highlights in the next season. Uh, if he's gonna show up, if he's gonna keep them from going to the Renkoku residence, or whatever, you know, situation he's in, it's gonna keep them from it. Because I really want answers. Because we didn't actually get any in the Mugen Train arc. Since Kyojiro just from the get-go was like, nope, don't d know anything. <laughs> so, yeah. A few episodes of answers would be nice. Instead of... Uh, getting interrupted again and you know a power boost so so Tanjiro could at least help out when fighting one of the upper moon Kizuki instead of being a hindrance so yeah these are my wishes for season two to continue also please keep up the style of animation and you know the budget and everything my hope is that they recut or mostly recut the movie into these episodes so they have more budget for the later episodes and the quality of animation doesn't dec decrease. At least that's my hope. <laughs> I'm really fucking hyped for the next few episodes since I'm actually watching them blind again. And I'm really interested in how this story is going to continue. Anyway, as always, if you want to support me, you can like, comment, subscribe or share this video. These are generally the best things that you can do for me for free. Or otherwise, you can go to my Patreon where you can get things like one week early access to any show that I'm watching non-live, like the first three episodes of Odd Taxi that are gonna come out later this week are already on Patreon. So check that out. And of course, full-length reactions like you got to try out again. If you're interested in those, you can visit my Patreon and get those. But after all that, I'm gonna love you and leave you. So 
see you again in the next episode or whenever. Bye bye.